Hey, welcome back to the RV Solar Channel. And uh, today we're gonna try and get the most power we can out of a modern generator that are in most of your modern RVs with a Victron Multi Plus. I'm sure if you're watching this video, you searched it and you wanna figure out why can't I get all the power? Why am I only getting power from one leg? Uh, well, it has to do with the way the generators are wired. And uh, today I've got a helper here, uh, Todd Klein YouTube, there he is. He's, uh, he does mostly, I think it was a snowmobile. Snowmobiles, yep, Polaris triples. Yep, Polaris uh, triple snowmobile content. Uh, maybe we'll drop a link down in the description, but we've been helping out him with his uh, fifth wheel here, and he's got that same problem with the generator, so we're gonna go over and figure out how to make this work and what the problem is, all right? <laughs> all right, we are not pulling this up, but let's say you got a typical Cummins uh, Onan generator. What you're going to find in it is there's uh, two legs, but they're in the same phase. And I'll show you what I mean here, or a little bit more. We'll actually measure it. So here's the transfer switch. And what's going on here is you got your two neutrals and you got a hot and hot. Now, what you'd expect is there's 240 volts through here, but really what's going on is it's 120. Uh, there's just two legs of 120 and they're in phase. And I'll show you what I mean here. We're gonna start the generator up and this is what you're gonna wanna do to find out if this is the problem for you or not. Uh, we'll start the generator up and we'll put uh, the, we'll measure the voltage between both of our hot legs. And if it's zero, that means we've got an in phase generator, two legs in phase, and then this trick will work. All right, so we've got the generator running as you can hear. We're measuring the two hots and we get zero volts, so well, close to zero. Now if we measure neutral to hot, we should get, well, we were getting 120, what happened? What changed? Oh, we went to DC. Not sure why that happened. All right. Tell me something. Back to AC, all right, 116 on that leg. 116 on that leg, and again, between the two hots, we get zero. So what we need to do to fix this situation is we need to bridge both of these hot legs at the generator side on the transfer switch. What that will do is it will pass, it will let all of the energy flow to one leg, and that's what the MultiPlus uses, is it only uses leg one for its charging. We got our little jumper put in there. That's just a piece of, uh, I think, six gauge or eight gauge wire, uh, much thicker than what's there. And the reason why I like to do it here you could do it at the generator end, but I want to do it here because um, we want to try and protect that wire, or we don't want all the wire going from there to there to be unprotected, but this way I think we are, because on the output of the transfer switch is much thicker to support all the energy coming from one leg, and that's essentially what kind of ends up happening. So, all right. Um, so we are going to, Todd's going to uh, fire it up, and run some stuff that he couldn't run before. You want to explain what was going on a little bit? Yeah, so the issue I'd have is I would start the generator and then would it, it would hook up to the camper. The, just the multi-plus alone would pull 1,800 watts out of the, off the generator to, to charge the battery bank. Well, if I tried to turn the AC on or the microwave on, I would kick out the 30 amp breaker on the generator. So it was doing me no purpose at all. And, and I didn't understand why I kept doing that. I didn't realize that the multi-plus pulls 1800 watts when it's charging the batteries. So once you fire up, if I would have known it and could monitor it better, I would have waited to turn something else on, knowing that the MultiPlus takes that 1800 watts off of that generator system. What we can do to mitigate that is you can turn your AC input current limit down to probably about 20 amps or 25 amps to keep the breaker on the generator from tripping. And that's really what we're trying to solve here. And now we can get the combined output of both legs and we won't have that problem where we can run two air conditioners plus a microwave, all that stuff off of this generator now, hopefully. More power. More, More power. power. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, so let's uh, fire it up and try some stuff. All right, we got our battery drained down. Now we're gonna start up the generator. Todd will do the honors here. All right, there we go. So now, <sighs> Here's the challenge, right? We're pulling 1600 watts from shore and now we want to run an air conditioner, but we don't have an air conditioner, or we do, it's just too cold to run one. So Todd's gonna fire up the heat pump on his air conditioner. And this is what typically you can't do on a single leg on a generator. You're gonna pop that breaker every time. 
So now we've got the, so now you're trying to pull 2,800 watts from a single leg on the generator. You typically can't do that, or now 2,600, almost 3,000 watts, right? Now before, was this, was this uh, popping the breaker most likely or? All within seconds, absolutely. Okay. So yeah, our load with the heat pump running right now is 1,500 and the generator is putting out almost 3,000 and it would never have gotten that far up without yep. it popping out. Now, if uh, what we or we or Todd was talking about before, you can adjust this uh, to get around this, but you just kind of got to know what you're doing or know why. So what you'd have to do is adjust the input current limit. And to do that, you'd go here. So this input current limit, you'd want to adjust that down a little bit. Let's just say there to make sure you didn't pop your, your breaker. And now, um, now it's going to limit. You can see we're pulling less from the generator. And what ended up happening is now we just got less going into the battery. That's where it pulled from. And if you keep dropping that down, eventually it'll actually draw from battery rather than put energy into the battery. Now, if we had solar going, solar would be charging the battery, but we turned that off for the time being. So uh, now with the, uh, oh, got to remember how this one works. This is, Todd's running the classic mode. Uh, but now with that jumper in there on the generator, you could probably safely keep that closer to 30. But, well, I don't know how close we want to get because it's a pain in the butt to reset the breaker. It is a total pain in the butt. All right, let's keep that. Where do you have it before? Let's not it's risk it. Right around 26, yeah. All right, let's not risk it. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, that's how to get a generator to work with your Victron MultiPlus and to pull all the power you need.